welcome. I'm Chris Principe, publisher of Financial IT, and I'm here at the amazing Money 2020 event. It's the hugest event of the year in the finance and fintech space, and it's in an amazing location, Las Vegas, Nevada. So we're here, we want to see all the excitement that's going on, everything that we can, and we're going to start with talking with my good friend Tom here. Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you? Great, great. Phenomenal That's, event. It, it is, right? Absolutely. You can just feel the excitement. Yes. <laughs> well, great. Let's get some of that excitement out. What are you guys doing today? Okay, my name is Tom Cosolino. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of a company called GFT, the best kept secret in financial technology, I think, in the world. GFT, look it up. Um, we are a, uh, a German based company, 12,000 people in 20 different countries around the world. And my job as Chief Strategy Officer for the U.S. is to take all that goodness that we've done, in, in, which we'll get into a little bit, and bring it to the U.S. audiences, the U.S. market. So I'm really excited to be here and really excited to tell you some stories as well. Well, I tell you, you know, I've heard the company before, but didn't realize the size and breadth of what you guys do. Absolutely. So give me some idea of the, the products and, and the services that you offer. Great. So probably 80% of our work is in financial services. Everything from fintech, banking, uh, blockchain, DLT, cloud adoption, um, and, and also some insurance work and some industries work as well as in visual inspection and things like that. So a, a plethora of different types of services, but again, laser focused pretty much on financial services in general. But this is the place for financial services. Absolutely. You know, my career is financial services, so I, I love what you're saying. Can you give us something you know, a little bit more in depth? Maybe there's something, uh, an announcement that, that's recently happened. Thanks for that, thanks for that, yes. I'd like to tell you a little bit of a story of a right. bank called the Salt Bank, which you probably have never heard of. It's a Romanian bank, and GFT and a couple of our partners, most notably Engine, Engine by Starlink, got together and built this neo bank, completely digital bank from scratch, and check it out. We were live in production in 362 days. Tom, I don't have to tell you this, how amazing it is for right. somebody who's, who's been in this industry for so long. I think it's the first time I've ever had anybody tell me that. Let me let me tell you the details. So first, right. we had a great platform. Engine is a cloud cloud first, microservices based, and, and you know sort of the modern of modern banking core banking systems. There's been a lot out there about oh, bring your 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 old dusty on prem systems into the cloud, but this was built from day one to do that. Fantastic uh, ability to compose. So composability, like Gartner says, is real in this. So that was the first thing that got us excited as a um, as a uh, services provider and an integrator. Second, we got smart and said, listen, we need to get off the mat with, with real customers and real, you know, real buyers, real, real end users in less than a year. To your point, how do you do that? Well, integration and automation is the key to that. So we took something called Enfido, which some of your, your readers may know, and we used that as the, the straight through processing way to get people onboarded. So very, very light touch onboarding, but clearly secure as well. And that was able to get people, you know, from, oh, I'd be interested in this, to having the app in their hands really, really quickly. The third thing is we are a, an engineering company, GFT. So what we do is we, we built the mobile front end. We built, again, all of the integrations. The other thing we did for customer service, we actually onboarded for SaltBank 51 resources from off the street, get up and running on the system so that they could do customer service. The other thing is, since this this uh, banking service is so automated, we actually went with, and again, hold your hat on this, real live people doing customer support. So instead of, every, nowadays what do people do? Deflect, 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 call tree, deflect, and then finally you'll get somebody. This service, because we, we whacked, we completely released or de decreased the cost of, of service, they can afford to put real agents on duty. And people love that because most of the, most of the, of the things they want to do, they can do by themselves. But if they can't, they can immediately connect with a real human, get the problem issue solved, and they're off to the races. Now, to me, that's an incredible, incredible story that we want to bring to U.S. buyers, to U.S. audiences. Well, I tell you, we could really use that in the U.S. I mean, just the idea of getting a real person, you know, doesn't sound like a bank. Right. 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 And now think of this. Think of the unbanked of us among us. Or think of high net worth individuals, the, 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 the sort of the, the wealth managers spend a ton of money servicing them, servicing them, servicing them. Imagine if, if these high net worth people could actually talk to somebody at a, a lower rate, but also have so much more composable services 
that they could that wealth managers could bring to them. So again, composability capabilities, customer service, next gen platforms. It's like something we've been waiting for for a long, long time. Well, I'd say especially in the wealth management industry where there's so much hand-holding to begin with. Absolutely. And expectations from the customer right. that need to be delivered to. But one of the things you said earlier really caught my attention, which is, you know, core banking is such a challenge out in the industry because there's so much legacy, huge investments, and huge risk with changing. How do you look at that kind of a challenge? Yeah, well, it's, it's not... One size does not fit all. So obviously, hey, hey, Mr. or Miss Head of Bank, we're gonna take four years, build you something new, and you're gonna we're gonna wave our hands and have it be be uh, migrated over. No. Then we will probably run alongside. Imagine imagine an, an, an established bank who wants to offer new banking services to their new customers, or maybe over time get off of that old thing. Well, again, that this this engine, engine as a platform can run right alongside, bring new buyers, new customers in, new services on, and then over time, you know, it, it's a sort of death by a thousand cuts. You move things over where and when it makes sense, but again, ripping that band-aid off all at once, I'm not I'm not into change for change's sake. Let's make sure that it's going to work from a, an adoption perspective, a cost perspective, and a schedule perspective. And also, hello, regulatory, right? You don't want to run afoul of those those folks. You want to be want them to be your friends all along that journey. Yeah, and you know, you, you made a really good point. I mean, there's a lot of great tech out there. It's new tech coming all the time, but what does it do for the business? Exactly. Right, and, that, and that's that's the challenge. That's the secret sauce, so to speak. So how do you guys manage that? Again, we are an engineering company, but everything we do, be it uh, you know, be it core systems uh, revamping, cloud adoption, AI and data, which we can talk about, it's all about, the first thing I always say is, hey guys, what? where does it hurt? Where does it hurt for the customer? What do they want to get done? Do they want to do a full-blown transformation or can we do one piece at a time, but every step along the way using agile technologies and all that kind of the normal, the normal ways of thinking, let's make sure there's a, a measurable business outcome to everything that we do. If you start there, you can't go wrong. No, good point. And that's really, I think, one of the things that kind of hold back a lot of banks. So look, you get a lot of CEOs who it's just a big risk. So if we can do it side by side, if we can do it piece by piece, if we can do it agilely, and, and be able to still cover our normal business, it's, it's gotta be interesting for them. Right, but again, it's all about balancing and trade-offs, right? Because any bank, any financial uh, institution looking to invest, they've gotta have, how long is it gonna take for this to, to pay back for me? I get so many other priorities, what do I do first? And again, we do everything from that strategy on the management consulting side into you know product selection, deployment, and again, delivery. That's what we're really all about. So for Salt, with the, the Romanian bank that you're working with, right. What was the, any particular challenges that you had with them? Well, again, it was both um, uh, time pressures we were under, new technology that they were learning. And again, what we did was we said, okay, we had people on site in Romania. We also have a, a huge development center in Poland. And we have another development center in one of our brain trusts for financial services in London. So we, we picked the dream team and we did the, we're also the masters or the, the experts at working along time zones and in matrixing teams. So that was our secret sauce. Again, engineering excellence, but also making sure we had a different set of points of views around these different countries to make sure we were not missing anything. And then every step of the way was keeping the customer happy, challenging ourselves and being super transparent. So that sounds like a, an excellent formula, a formula that should work quite well in the US. Fingers crossed. What's your strategy here in the US? Well, again, you can't boil the ocean, right? Okay. So let's. Let's start segmenting and looking at the market in general. And let's get to where, you know, where is the, where are the pain points, both in the larger banks, but also tier two banks, even credit unions. Everyone's got similar problems, but how do we look at the technologies and tools we bring to the table and map them into a way that is going to be, again, the light bulb goes off for them and they say, yes, I want to have that next discussion. That's what we're about. Well, it seems like here at Money 2020, it's an excellent place to start a lot of discussions. What brought you to Money 2020? Again, it was to, to speak, to tell the story wherever people would listen to me, but also get get a, um, a flavor of what's next and what's working and what can I learn here, both from a product perspective and approach perspective, 
you know, and also from a contact perspective that I can use to bring back to GFT and get, you know, get airborne even more. It's, it's a challenge because I'm the only one here today, unfortunately, but um, I'm going to run around really fast, do my best, and just, I will, we will be back again next year because this, this conference is extremely impressive. It's huge, um, but we're, we're excited to be here in both listen, learn, and contribute. Well, I think you're spot on with a lot of that. This is one of my favorite events also. And here at Money 2020, we're hearing about a, a lot of new things and, and your breadth of experience, your knowledge, your chief strategy officer. Can you give us some window into the future? Where are we going? <laughs> well, I saw a Zoltar over there. There's a Zoltar machine here. Maybe I should go, had gone there first. Some of the, some of the, you know, the, the obvious ones are AI, data, and frankly, customer service in, in general. AI, right, now again, as I said earlier, we've, we're up to our necks in AI experiments. We've also done a lot of real projects for real customers. And again, for us, the learning over and over and over again is, it's not AI for AI's sake, it's AI in service of, or to make something happen. The other thing is AI will, I don't think AI um, is going to be a front end thing as much as it's going to be a back end thing. How do you do that in ways that is again, safe for customers and end users uh, information but also is going to deli keep delivering and delivering as both the technology changes every single day, but also as customers' needs change, as they get more used to AI, how's it going to become something they trust, but not something they feel like they are enslaved to? That's the first thing. Data. Data, data, data. Everyone has data. Nobody has got their hands wrapped around it. So data strategy is going to be here, which is exciting because we love to do data strategy. But again, not data strategy of, hey, we'll come back in six months, give you a big giant PowerPoint and say, here's what you have to do. No, no, no. How do we be smart about, again, running alongside the right, the right subject areas of data, optimizing for that as we kind of zigzag it in the future. That's the second thing. And again, customer service of all kinds, be it me talking to you, me talking to um, an advisor, me talking to someone who's got to serve, you know, someone who's underbanked. What is that all about? Everything has got to stack together so that we're doing the right thing, you know, across all of our stakeholders. But, uh, you know, AI has been the talk in a, in a lot of places. You're probably the first person that I've met talking about AI who brought up customer service. It's, look, why else are we doing it? I mean, it, it and again, this is not to, push people out of the way. I think human in the middle, super important. I think AI as a tool for someone, a power tool for uh, an agent, fantastic. But there's so much between their ears about the things they know, the, the problems they've seen, and their intuition that you're not gonna capture in, in silicon or in software right now. And that's a good thing. So one of the things that I, I have seen, you know, o over a lot of years, is most technology, new technology that comes out, it's, you know, how do we sell it to the customer? But it seems to me with AI, there's almost a three-part approach that a lot of companies are first, or at least starting to use it internally to improve internal processes, then rolling it out to their customers, who then roll it out to the end users. Are you seeing a similar? It's, it's a mix, but at right. the end of the day, I think the most important thing is to know what you're doing, not just to buy a bunch of stuff and say, we gotta figure stuff out. So we will run these workshops where we've done, you know, design thinking workshops, which I think is a great mode to go from, here's a big giant universe to, you know what, here's five things I think we probably want to talk about. That's, again, that's super important. If you can take a scope, it's a scope management, or scope management creep, let's get rid of the creep. So you've got smaller, a number of things to do, and then you can zero in and focus on them. But to your point, there's so much technical debt inside customers, inside client customer uh, companies, excuse me. Start there is a great idea. Then you can fall down, maybe you can fail a little bit, and then you're not exposing anything to the outside world. But that's a great trajectory, I think, that you just laid out. Well, great. Well, really excited about what you talked about today. GFT sounds like they're really at the front of so much, and particularly, uh, many times you mentioned customer service. Mm -hmm. Really important and sometimes overlooked. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today at Money 2020. Thank you. Great to meet you. Great. Talk again soon. Chris Principe, Financial IT.